Hello everybody. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video on all these shirts here and um, you can look forward to something. I think it will be Friday or Saturday for my first top 10 video. I'm gonna look at the top 10 World Cup winning shirts as of my choosing. But what I want to talk about is of course the Milan game tonight. Um, let's get the other things first out of the way. I have not seen anything about the Carabao Cup in England and frankly I find this is a competition kind of unnecessary. I know it has a little bit of tradition, but in England it's FA Cup, it's the Premier League, uh, but all those cup competitions are a little bit crazy. I saw there was a lot of German Cup play, um, some of it probably still going on. Uh, most importantly, I think that one that uh, stuck out was Schalke winning on penalties against Cologne. Uh, epic penalty shootout, I think it went to the sixth player. Um, yeah, also some cup games in Austria, most importantly for me, Lask won 3-0 in Altach, a team that just a few uh, weeks ago we played only 1-1 one -one at home, so I was a little bit nervous about that one, but yeah. We made it and Salzburg stumbled into the next round as well, which is kind of this one thing. If Salzburg is eliminated, then it's a free-for-all for everyone else. If Salzburg stays in a competition, especially if they go to the latter stages, Salzburg will win it and they've won it, I think, five times in a row, as they did with championships. But I think the only really interesting game was Milan against Genoa, the makeup game from the first round, which was cancelled because of the bridge collapse in Genoa. And what a game it was. Uh, it was not an easy game for me to watch, especially the second half. Um, fourth minute, Suso, wonderful goal. I only saw it in replay because I was just restarting my stick. Darn new Amazon Fire Stick. Uh, so I saw it on the replay, 1-0 for Milan, uh, was a really nicely taken shot. Milan had a few chances, but it seemed like for most of the time, yeah, they controlled the game without being too threatening themselves. Uh, I looked a little bit at the lineup and I saw that Bakayoko is playing, seemingly Bilia cannot play, then of course Musaki is playing because um, Bonaventura is not playing. So it was kind of a little bit of a makeshift team for Milan, which, yeah... <laughs> It's always a little bit uh, shaky thing, and I like that they're playing Kutrone and Iguain up front. I think that's a good thing, uh, having those two play together. Uh, Bakayoko, unfortunately, is the weak link in that if he's playing um, Bilia, I'm not very happy with, to be honest, because uh, I think he's too slow. I think they would really need a dynamic midfield player that Bakayoko should be, but already got two sets. Uh, He's not too happy with him, so yeah. Yeah, and just when I thought, yeah, Milan is controlling as well, uh, in the last 10, 15 minutes of the first half, Genoa came and uh, it was not huge changes. There was a few misses here and there, but it was overall in such a way that I really thought, I hope halftime comes soon. I really hope that halftime comes soon. It, wasn't, it was soon enough. I mean, he, at 45 minutes, he whistled it dead because I really thought an equalizer is coming. Sorry, I have a cold. I'm not feeling too well, but I still was watching the game. Second half, Milan came out storming. I thought, yeah, let's make the 2-0. Let's make it 2-0. And then just 55th or 56th minute uh, slapped stick defending. And that's the problem. I mean, I saw it already in the first half when uh, Donnarumma gets the ball on his foot. It just doesn't look good. And yeah, uh, he put them twice into trouble and from that moment on Genoa saw there something, could something happening and then yeah, this was also one. I mean, there were a lot of Milan defenders around. I know there were Genoa players in the box, but uh, why Bakayoko is shooting the ball right towards the goal line where there is the great number 11 from Genoa, who I think had a great game standing there and he just hammers it and I think the shot would have even crossed the goal line. But of course Romagnoli is standing there and with a big lob into goal. It was kind of a freak goal. Romagnoli is the least responsible party on that one. And then it was always, you know, Milan. it took Milan about 10 more minutes to get something going to uh, create chances. And they did create chances, but you always could get caught on the count counter-attack. And sometimes the shots that they took were ridiculous. I, Think about again Bakayoko, Kessie, although he was uh, has, has had a very good fighting game, uh, he not always knows where the goal is. 
you go in, botched one chance, but then Cassie almost made the goal there. And one thing you could see already that um, Genoa goalkeeper, Radu, he's very good on the line because he made some great saves, especially one on uh, or two even on Suso. Maybe one from Iguain as well. So, I mean, uh, he, there were chances that he uh, botched. And then there was one save situation where he ran out, out of goal and you could see he's completely lost there. And I think that's the one chance that Bakayoko missed. And that was a sign of things to come. In the last 10 minutes, Milan was pressing like crazy. And I was afraid, okay, Pandev is coming on uh, for Piatek, who... Then I gotta give the Milan defense. I, the Milan defense is one of the shakiest things I've seen in a long time. Uh, however, going, going forward, they're good, but um, you didn't see much of Piatek. And gotta give it to them. And then Pandev comes on, you know, old Inter player, and I was thinking, oh, he's gonna make the goal. Milan is gonna get count, uh, called on a counter. Fortunately, they didn't. Uh, they pressed hard. Uh, had numerous chances and uh, actually was sometimes quite kind of pleasant to see how with quick passes they moved forward. This was the Milan that I saw at the beginning of the season. Of course, this didn't bring the goal. The goal was brought by a horrible goalkeeping mistake. I think it was after a corner, the ball was cleared, it came back, then there are three defenders and the goalkeeper runs out and boxes it and then there's the empty goal and with a quick reflex, Romagnoli made good on his own goal. And it goes into the net, empty net, win for Milan. It was an important one because now it's fourth place and now I think that calms a lot of people, I hope. Uh, not talk about Gattuso being relieved, I think you shouldn't really feel it during the season. Important win, I'm happy. My two favorite teams in the world have won. Uh, kind of important wins. I mean, cup competition is always nice, and you know, if in Serie A you can make it into the Champions League, that's where Milan wants to be. That's where I hope they will end up. So yeah, that was great. Let me know about any results or any games that you watched tonight. Uh, I'm happy. Would be happy to hear about you, especially if you watch the Carabao Cup or anything else. I thought also Real Madrid was winning in the cup, <laughs> but that was to be expected. And yeah. Anything else? If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.